In this video I'll be going through the 2022 electrical systems paper. Question 1. George is investigating AC circuits. He connects a 54 microfarad or 54 times 10 to the minus 6 farad capacitor in series with a 36 ohm resistor and a 25 volt RMS 50 hertz AC supply as shown in the diagram below. Show that the reactance of the capacitor is 58.9 ohms. Capacitor reactance is 1 over omega C, where C is our capacitance that we're given right here, but we don't know our angular frequency. The equation for that is 2 pi f, where f is our frequency which we're given over here. Making that substitution, and putting our numbers in, gives me 58.946 ohms, or 58.9 to 3 significant figures, which is what we're trying to find. Calculate the circuit current. We can find this using our equation that our voltage is equal to IZ, where we can divide both sides by Z and swap the sides around to get voltage over Z, where our voltage is our source voltage, which we're given right here, but we don't know Z our impedance. The equation for impedance is this one here, where we know our resistance of 36 ohms, and we also know our reactance because that's what we found in the last question. Putting those numbers in, gives me 69.0 ohms to three significant figures, which we can now put into our final equation. Giving me 0 0.362 amps to three significant figures. Calculate the phase difference between the supply voltage and the circuit current for the circuit shown on page 2. State which one leads. You may draw a phasor diagram in the space below. In our phasor diagram we have our resistor voltage going along here, and capacitor voltage always goes downwards. Our supply voltage is the sum of these two vectors, meaning if we take our VR and add on our VC, we're going to get our VS. Now our vectors rotate in a counterclockwise direction, and because our VR is in phase with our current, that means our supply voltage is lagging our circuit current. Or in other words, the circuit current is leading. Now we're being asked for the phase difference, which is this angle here, where if we look at our vector diagram here, we have our VR and our VS forming a right angled triangle. So as you might expect, we're going to use Sokotoa. VR is our adjacent angle and VS is our hypotenuse, meaning we can use the cosine relationship. That cosine of our angle is our adjacent VR divided by our hypotenuse VS. Now we haven't found our resistor voltage, but what we do know is that it's equal to IR just as we know that our Vs is equal to Iz. And given that we know both R and Z already, it's going to be much easier to make the substitution because as you'll see in a moment, the current cancels out. Solving this for our phase difference by taking the inverse cosine of both sides, putting our numbers in, gives me 58.6 degrees to three significant figures. And so the current leads by 58.6 degrees. Now it's also worth noting that we could have used the fact that this is VC and therefore equal to our IX, meaning that we could have used the tan relationship to get the same answer. Explain how the addition of a suitable inductor to the resistor capacitor circuit with the AC supply can make the circuit resonate. Begin your answer by explaining the meaning of resonance in a circuit. When a circuit is in resonance, a few things happen. Resonance occurs when the impedance is at minimum and equal to the resistance, due to the inductor reactance equaling the capacitor reactance and the total reactance equaling zero. In this state, the current is at maximum. Therefore, to achieve resonance, the inductor reactance should match the capacitor reactance. Question 2. David is investigating inductors and magnets. He uses a 1.60 Henry 22 ohm inductor and connects it to a 12 volt power supply. The inductor can be considered as a pure inductor in series with a resistor as shown in the diagram below. Calculate the circuit current after two time constants once the switch is closed and the current begins to flow. If we imagine a graph of our current against time, the current in an inductor is going to increase like this. 
where we have our I maximum here. And our time constant is the time for a 63% change, which we can indicate here. Our first step is to find our maximum current. The maximum current occurs here, when our current stops changing and the back EMF is zero, and for all intents and purposes, we just have a voltage source and a resistor, meaning that we can just use our Ohm's law, V equals IR. Dividing both sides by resistance, putting our numbers in, gives me 0.545 amps. Let's now find the current after one time constant. Our current after one time constant is just going to be 63% of our maximum current, which in this case is 0.545, which gives me 0.343 amps. Now for two time constants, we now start at a current here and approach our maximum here. And so essentially our graph has reduced, where our maximum current is no longer this here, it is instead this here. And so our IMAX is our original maximum current, 0.545, minus our new starting current, which is 0.343, which gives me 0.202 amps. Now our new current is going to be the current that we're starting at, 0.343, plus 63% of this current increase here, which gives me 0.470 amps. State the voltage across the pure inductor and the voltage across the resistor once the current is steady. When our current is at a steady value, the back EMF that our inductor produces is proportional to the change in current. Because it's not changing, we have no back EMF and therefore no voltage. That means that our entire 12 volt source must be spent across our resistor. Once the current has reached a steady value, the switch is opened. The current falls to zero in 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. Calculate the size of the average induced voltage and state the direction of the induced voltage across the inductor. The equation for our induced voltage is this one here, where our change in current is our 0.545, the time is this here, and the inductance we were given above as 1.6 Henry. Putting those numbers in, giving me negative 34.9 volts to three significant figures. Now, as you might note, we have a negative in this answer. What that indicates is that our back EMF is in the opposite direction to our change in current. So the back EMF is in the opposite direction to the current change, so it acts in the same direction as Vs and the current. The 22 ohm resistor is replaced with a 44 ohm resistor, and the switch is then closed. Explain by comparing quantitatively, or how much, the changes that will take place for the size of the maximum current drawn from the circuit, the time constant, and the energy stored in the inductor once the current is steady. Let's do these in order. Via Ohm's law, since our maximum current is V over R, and V is unchanged, increasing R will decrease I max. And since our time constant is L over R and L is unchanged, increasing R will decrease our time constant. And finally, since our energy is half Li squared and L is unchanged, because our current has decreased, so too will our energy. And now we can be more specific than that, because as we can see, our resistance has doubled. Because our resistance has doubled, I max has halved, our time constant has halved, but because our current in this relationship here is squared, that means our energy has courted. Question 3. Anne is carrying out some experiments using parallel metal plates to investigate capacitors. She takes a pair of metal plates with an area of 0.160 meter square and connects them to a 9 volt DC supply. The plates of the air filled capacitor, permittivity of 1, are separated by a distance of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Show that the capacitance of the capacitor is 1.42 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. Our equation for capacitance is this, where epsilon naught is our constant, epsilon r is our 1 here, our area was given up here, and our distance is just here. Putting all those in, gives me 1.4160 times 10 to the minus 9 farads, or 1.42 to 3 significant figures, which is what we're trying to find. Calculate the energy stored in the capacitor once it's fully charged. The equation for the energy stored in a capacitor is this one here, 
where we know the voltage, it's given here, but we don't know the charge. The equation for the charge in a capacitor is this one here, where we know both the capacitance and we also know the voltage, so we can make this substitution. Putting our numbers in, gives me 5.75 times 10 to the minus 8 joules to three significant figures. Describe the effect on the energy stored in the capacitor when a sheet of mica with relative permittivity 7 is introduced between the capacitor plates. And so introducing our sheet of mica is going to increase our permittivity, which is this value here, which is going to increase our capacitance, which will increase our energy. Because our relative permittivity has gone from 1 to 7, all of these increases are going to be by a factor of 7. Increasing the relative permittivity times 7 increases the capacitance times 7, which increases the energy times 7. And then disconnects the plates from the 9 volt DC supply so that the plates are electrically isolated. She then pulls the plates apart, explain what would happen to the charge on the plates and the voltage across the plates. Because our plates are electrically isolated, the plate charge will not change. And via this equation here, increasing D will decrease C. Because Q equals CV and Q is constant, our voltage will increase. And then experiments with connecting some different capacitors in series and in parallel across a 12 volt supply, as shown in the diagram below. Calculate the voltage across the 4.7 times 10 to the 2 microfarad capacitor. Begin your answer by calculating the total capacitance. So we have this capacitor and these capacitors in series, where these capacitors are in parallel. As you might recall, the equation for capacitors in series is the sum of the inverse capacitances in series, where in this section here our capacitors in parallel will add together to give us 8 times 10 to the 2 farads. Solving that for CT by taking the inverse of both sides, which gives me 296 microfarads. Now to find the voltage we can use the equation that Q equals CV. Rearranging for voltage gives us V equals Q over C, where we know our capacitance of 4.7 times 10 to the 2, but we don't know our charge. Now the thing about capacitors in parallel is that we get a certain charge on this plate here, which attracts an equal charge onto this plate here, which if we imagine this as just one big fat capacitor, which we can, means that we have a positive charge on this plate here, resulting in an equal negative charge on this plate here. The point I'm making is that this amount of charge is equal in all of these cases, meaning that the charge across this capacitor here is the same as a charge across an equivalent big capacitor, the capacitance of which is what we just found here. And so we can use our equation that our total charge is equal to our total capacitance times our voltage and substitute this for our Q. Putting those numbers in, gives me 7.56 volts. And now just as an aside, you might note that I somewhat ignored our micro symbol here, which is times 10 to the minus 6. I was able to do that here because I was adding two things with units of microfarads, and so I knew I would get an answer out in microfarads. And I was able to do that here because I had microfarads divided by microfarads, so they cancelled out. So at no point did I need to make this substitution. If you're confident doing so, then do the same. If you're not, then I suggest always converting to the SI unit, which in this case was farads. And we're done.